So you have some data and you need to calculate chi-square, which can be defined as a statistical measure of the magnitude of the differences between the observed and expected frequencies. You use chi-square on nominal or categorical data. To that end, we will focus on a brief and basic understanding of chi-square, how to calculate the chi-square statistic, and how to use what you have calculated to determine if you should accept or reject the null hypothesis. We will calculate a one variable chi-square here. Once you understand the basics, the two variable chi-square, while time consuming, will be fairly simple to do. Let's start with some assumptions. Let's say that we're interested in learning styles. In particular, we hypothesize that individuals have dominant learning styles, one of three, visual, auditory, or kinesthetic. You can write a measure to divide individuals into one of the three learning styles, and you do a survey of, say, 99 people. If the resulting data is evenly distributed, we would expect the numbers to be broken up evenly among the three learning styles, in this case, 33 in each category. 99 divided by three categories is 33. So that's what we would expect to find if the data were normally distributed. But at what point can we say that learning styles is not normally distributed? Say your results are, instead of being normally distributed at 33 for each category, your survey results are 35 for visual, 24 for auditory, and 40 for kinesthetic. That's what we observe from the data we gathered. But is that enough of a difference to say that there really is a dominant learning style? Could what we have found or observed be the result of chance or sampling error? That's what we use chi-square for. The formula for chi-square is the sum of observed minus expected squared divided by expected. All we need to know in the formula is that observed is O and expected is E. In this case, O means observed or what you actually found, and E means expected or what you would expect to find if there were no differences, if the data were, for example, normally distributed between the categories. Remember that expected is total sample size divided by the number of categories. For example, 99 people, three categories, means 33 in each category. The expected would be 33. You are using chi-square to test a hypothesis. The chi-square hypothesis is really the alternative hypothesis. You are hypothesizing that there will be a difference between what you observe, which is what you have or will find, and what you would expect to find if there were no differences in the data. In other words, the chi-square hypothesis is that the expected would not equal the observed frequencies. Remembering that the null hypothesis encompasses everything but what's included in the alternative hypothesis, the null hypothesis would be that E equals O, or that there is no difference between what you would expect to find if all responses were equally distributed and what you did find or observed in the resulting data. So now let's focus on how to calculate a one variable chi-square, where you are asking if there is a non-normal distribution on a single variable. In this case, we'll continue with the learning styles example. One variable, what type of learning style? Remember that in our example, there were three possible answers to this question. That means three categories. The number of categories is designated as K. That helps you determine your expected data, the total number of observations in our example, we've been using 99, divided by K, or the number of categories. One other calculation you will need after you've calculated the chi-square is degrees of freedom, designated as DF. This is the number of categories, K, minus one. In our case, that would be two degrees of freedom. If you had four categories, visual, auditory, kinesthetic, and, well, let's say, extrasensory, then degrees of freedom would be three. Four categories minus one equals three. It has been argued that individuals have dominant learning styles, visual, auditory, or kinesthetic. You do a survey of 99 people and you get the following results. 35 were visual learners, 24 were auditory learners, and 40 were kinesthetic learners. These are your observed frequencies. And another reminder, chi-square is used for categorical or nominal data not continuous level data. In other words, you don't calculate chi-square for data that you can summarize in means. The question is, at one point can we say that learning styles is not normally distributed? Let's focus first on the visual cell. Remember that we have 99 observations, sometimes called instances of cases. 
In this cell, you have an observed frequency of 35. Step one is to calculate the expected frequency. Recall the formula as the total number of observations, in this case 99, divided by the number of categories, in this case three. So 99 divided by three is 33. The next step is to subtract the observed, in this case 35, from the expected, in this case 33, yielding two. The formula tells us that we now have to square that, so we are now at four. Now it's time to divide that by the expected, which we previously calculated at 33. So four divided by 33 is 0.12. Now let's do it for auditory, where the observed is 24. We have 33 again for the expected, but now when we subtract the expected from the observed, we get negative nine. Following the formula, we square that and come up with 81. Now we take that 81 and divide it by the expected value of 33, and we end up with 2.45. On to the last column of numbers for kinesthetic. Again, expected is 33. When subtracted from the observed of 40, yields 7. 7 squared is 49, and when you divide 49 by the expected, 33, you end up with 1.48. One last step to calculate chi-square is to add this bottom row of numbers together. 2 plus 2.45 plus 1.48 equals 4.05. 4.05 then is the calculated chi-square. Now that you've calculated the chi-square, we need to compare it against something to make a decision to accept or reject the null. To do this, you'll need to calculate the degrees of freedom. Remember that? Know the desired alpha level related to the desired level of confidence in your decision, and a chi-square distribution table so you can find the critical value. Remember the formula for degrees of freedom is the number of categories minus one. In our case, we have three categories, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. Minus one equals two degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom means essentially room to move, or how many ways our data can be combined and still produce the same value of the calculated chi-square. If you have a product of three, for example, that could be achieved by one plus one plus one, or zero plus one plus two, et cetera. Okay, let's say that we want an alpha level of 0.05, which when converted to a percentage is 5%. This means that we want to be 95% confident in our decision, or that we are only willing to tolerate a 5% chance of error. Time to take all this data and look at a table of chi-square critical values. You are looking for where your degrees of freedom and your alpha level intersect. In this case, with two degrees of freedom and an alpha level of 0.05, the critical value is 5.991. Now compare your calculated chi-square with the critical value. If your calculated chi-square is higher than the critical value, this means that you can be 95% sure that what you observed is really different from what you would expect to see. So you would reject the null hypothesis that there's no difference. If, however, your calculated chi-square is lower than the critical value, then you should accept the null hypothesis that there is no difference between what you would expect to find and what you did find or observed in your data. One way to remember whether to reject or accept the null is to think what you do when you buy something. You have a certain amount of money in your wallet. If the price of what you want to buy is high, it is more than the money than you have in your wallet, in this case, the critical value, you don't purchase, so you reject the purpose, you reject the null. If the price is low, however, you will accept the purchase, so you'll accept the null. So if the calculated chi-square is higher than the critical chi-square value, then you reject the null in favor of the alternative hypothesis. In our example, the calculated chi-square of 4.05 is lower than the critical value chi-square of 5.991. So your decision would be to accept the null. In other words, you cannot conclude that what you observed in your data supports your hypothesis that there is a dominant learning style. Processing time, what is the basic concept behind chi-square? That there are significant differences between what you observed and what you would expect. What would you do if your calculated chi-square is higher than the critical value chi-square? Well, you should reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative chi-square hypothesis. 
Now remember, if the calculated chi-square is higher than the critical value, you reject the null. If it is lower, you accept the null. If you calculated the chi-square as zero, what would that mean? Well, that would mean that there's no difference between what you observed and what you would expect to see. In other words, the two sets of numbers are identical. Now you understand the difference between the observed and expected frequencies, and you know how to calculate a one variable chi-square. But what if you were interested in knowing if men have a different learning style than women? Well, now you have two variables, learning style and sex. So you'll have to learn to calculate a two variable chi-square. But that's a topic for another video.